Hallelujah. Good morning. Let's enter into his course of praise and thanksgiving. There is no sound of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail not. Good morning, folks. Praise the Lord. Forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies will see. Hallelujah. Good. So to get my communion and my cup. Praise the Lord today, folks. Praise His holy name, yes. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us on these 21 days of fasting and praise. That's the Z for praise. <clears throat> Z for zealous, for God's honor. And uh, it's time to free America, amen. <laughs> it's time to free America. Today is day six of our fasting and praise and repentance. And our topic today is seeking holiness and repentance of anger and strife. Praise the Lord. So we, uh, we come together and thank God for that. Uh, today's reading, I'm going to jump right in, is taken from my book. 21 Days of Fasting and Praise. If you haven't gotten that yet, of course, it's online. And today's reading is taken from John G. Lake. <clears throat> and it's his collections of his life, testimonies. That's a thick book, isn't it? I uh, haven't read it all. But he's got some great things to say. He is a, was a healer, passed away. A new guy named Curry Blake took his, took his place. You can check, check him out online. Let's start today's uh, reading with a prayer. So, Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit today that has joined us, who lives in us, and we celebrate day six of our journey in repentance. And we thank you, God, that you are with us. And if you are with us, no one can stop us. Amen. Amen. Let's start today. It says, Fear not to place thy hand upon thy nail pierced palm, fear not to trust my guidance. The way I trod is marked with bleeding feet and wet with many tears. <clears throat> Those who have overcome indeed have found their entrance by this path, their entrance by this path. John G. Lake, March 6, 1916. Hello, and thank you for joining us. And the testimony and the meditation today is the character of our Father. The very substance of my being and essence of my nature is purity. My purpose of salvation of mankind is to produce in man a kindred holiness. <clears throat> a radiant purity like unto my father himself. If I was unable to produce this holiness, then my father's purpose would be a failure and not a triumph. This is your triumph today that you are willing to be led by my spirit. Even though you are baptized in soul by my Holy Spirit, there remains a necessity to walk in humility and let my spirit be your absolute guide. Give your desires of the flesh, the sensuality of your thought life, and the adverse tendencies to me, says the Lord. These are revealed by your human nature to crucify, eject, and be destroyed by my illuminating presence. Come into my father's house. I just want to pause for a second. Just say that in your heart. Come into my father's house. I come into my father's house. It's so good he's with us. Come into my father's house with stain upon thy garments and be purged of evil, anger, rage, malice, and discontent. Amen. Heaven cannot dwell in temples seared by flames of strife, anger, and hate. He who treads the path of angels must realize seraphic purity. If this is your quest, my friend, 
then to you heaven's gates are opened wide, and my kingdom is revealed to the peacemakers, to the pure in heart. Hallelujah. Now we go into our introspection of anger, rage, and strife today. You know, we all struggle with that in moments of anger, whether we're faced with small annoyances or overwhelming situations. <laughs> and rather than lashing out with harsh words and actions, which only leave us with guilt and shame, we can pause, remember, and reflect that Holy Spirit is in us. And he's watching our lips, hearing our words. We can focus on the scriptures. The Bible gives us plenty of advice on dealing with anger and how to handle emotions. Ephesians 4, 26, 7. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. James 1, 19, 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So this begs the question, what is the righteousness that God desires? The Bible teaches us that not all anger is wrong. Righteous anger stems from an anger that arises when we witness an offense to our holy God and his word. Righteous anger cares about others. It attacks the sin and not the sinner. It's important to consider what can result from our anger. Anger is an emotion that can cause a lot of harm. I'm sure you've all seen that. Can we get people into a lot of trouble? But anger in and of itself is not bad. Experiencing righteous anger towards injustice can be a positive catalyst for change. We should get angry about injustice, especially toward the weak and the poor. God experiences anger and his wrath and anger are talked about in the Bible. We've seen it. Imagine how Jesus felt when he overturned the money tables and called his house a house of prayer for all nations, not a den of thieves. Friends, God is waiting on his church, the ecclesia, to overturn evil edicts, decrees, just as he did in the book of Esther. A good example of righteous anger today is how you may feel as the church about this present darkness over our world called the Great Reset that's out there which came from that generation of humanists, secularists, atheists, who were discipled in the late 60s and 70s that have now taken charge in the world, governing, discipling, teaching, entertaining, and informing our nation today of all ungodliness. So now let us take the bread <clears throat> in our hand and pause and reflect as we take our communion elements. And as we pray and repent of unrighteous anger, let's hold the bread up. Bow our hearts. Father, with the bread of life in hand, we join with you in proclaiming your son's victory by this communion and what Jesus did at the cross through his resurrection. Lord, the battle is yours and already won. So we ask the Lion of Judah in the people of God the ecclesia, to roar and overturn the tables of injustice and evil decrees across this land of the free and the brave. <clears throat> we destroy arguments and lofty things that stand against the lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for justice in our homes, our children, our churches, and our schools, our government, and this great nation. America, the beautiful. Holy God, we come in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, and ask for help and forgiveness of our own and unknown sin of anger, violence, and human rage. Let's pause now, repent, and reflect, and think about where we have times of anger in our own hearts. We repent, Lord. Teach us to be more like you, Jesus with the righteous anger from seeing your Holy Father opposed and mocked and your Holy Word disregarded. Help us to be the voice of righteousness for our family's sake, our church, and our nation. Today, we turn the tide of this present darkness by removing our lampshades of love and let our truth shine. Jesus, 
We hold righteous anger toward those who have mocked you and blasphemed your Holy Spirit. And we ask you to hold them accountable, these influential people in high places, that your word would be empowered and would penetrate their hearts like a sharp, piercing sword to convict, heal, and deliver them unto salvation, that they would honor your word, remove strife, overturn their evil decrees. We even declare a shift in the heavens today, and we command the souls that are hunted by the enemy to be let go. President Joseph R. Biden, Yuvi Noah Harari, George Soros, Dr. Anthony Fauci, Klaus Schwab, and those who work at the Global Economic Forum, we plead the blood of Christ over them by name that they repent and come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Convict, heal, and deliver them, or let your burning righteous anger overtake them. In Jesus' name, we take the bread. Take the cup in hand. Now we turn our eyes to the Reawaken America Tour coming to Nashville, January 20 and 21. And we ask for your protective covering over Clay and Vanessa Clark and the speakers, Pastor Greg Locke, the worker bees, and the people in attendance. Let your holy wind usher in that we see baptisms, deliverances, salvations, miracles, and healings, and a great outpouring of your spirit. Thank you in advance for removing any and all angry, evil oppression, antagonistic dark spirits that would try to entangle us. Shield us under the shadow of your wings and give your angels charge over us for all that contends with us to guard us in all of our ways. Drink the cup. Hallelujah. Now declare, declare this with me. I declare by the fire of your love will burn up every selfish, arrogant, carnal, or wicked thing in me. Your character shall set me free. I grab a hold of the promises and the provision of your holiness. As you are holy, we are holy. All hindrances Fears, barriers, blocks, doubts, and delays for my liberation, my joy, and freedom are now removed in Jesus' name. You have brought me into a wide and spacious land, and my borders lie in sweet, agreeable, and peace-filled places. This is my declaration, so let it be. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining me today. We are making a difference, people. So stay the course with me these next 21 days. And I will see you tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. It'll be 8 o'clock, not 7. I need some sleep and Jody needs some rests so that we can have some time to get ready for you. So we'll see you tomorrow, Saturday, 8 a.m. Thank you and have an angry free day.